Thank you for taking care of my daughter for a year. When my sister-in-law came back from her trip overseas, she came straight to our house. She tried to take my almost one-year-old daughter, thanking me for looking after her own daughter for a year. I got really worried and stopped her, telling her that the baby was actually mine, but she didn't seem to understand. I left her in the yard feeling uneasy. What I didn't know then were the scary things she was about to say, which really scared me. When she saw I wasn't joking, her face went pale. That's when everything started getting chaotic because of my sister-in-law. This all started about a year and a half ago when Megan, my 25-year-old sister-in-law, suddenly came back to her parents' home with a baby. She said, My husband got moved overseas suddenly, but I'm scared of raising our little one in a foreign place. It's also new to me. Oh, and I'm pregnant too. I hope our kids can be friends. If it's Kristen's baby, they'll be so cute together. It's weird to think of being friends with my sister-in-law, Megan said. Megan was friendly and talked to me easily, even though I was a bit older. It made me think we could be good friends. Even after I had my own baby, I lived in a separate house with my 30-year-old husband while Megan stayed with her parents. It's great that Megan's place is nearby. We can hang out whenever we want. I thought we'd all get along well with her and my husband's parents, I thought. But soon, I realized I was being too trusting. After moving back in with her parents, Megan started revealing her true self bit by bit. Sorry, Kristen. I have something urgent and can't take care of my baby. Can you watch her for me? Sure, but what's going on? My dad hurt his back. I need to get him some patches, Megan would explain. Feeling sympathetic, I happily took care of her baby. But this became a regular thing, with Megan always finding reasons to leave her child with me. That wasn't the only issue, though. Sorry, I need you to look after my baby again today, Kristen. Megan, are you lying to me? What? Why would you say that? Her reaction was over the top, making me sigh. Do you think I'm clueless? Your dad has never had back problems. Did I say that? I can't remember. She couldn't even keep track of her lies. And there was more. Hey, someone said they saw you out in town. Huh? Who snitched? No, it must have been someone who looked like me. Who are you going to believe? some random person or your sister-in-law. Despite her attempt to convince me, her acting was terrible. Take care of your own child. I'm done helping you. What? Why? That's not fair. Megan threw a fit like a child but then stopped suddenly, as if she had an idea. Fine. I'll make you want to take care of my child yourself. What do you mean? Instead of answering, she smirked, grabbed the baby, and left our house. Feeling uneasy, I talked to my husband and in-laws about Megan's behavior, but it was like talking to a wall. She showed no remorse or understanding. And she had a plan. One afternoon, while I was napping on the couch with my pregnant belly, I heard a baby crying. Is it from a neighbor's house? It sounds too close, I thought. Then my phone rang. Hello, Kristen speaking. Hey, Kristen, please take care of my baby. What? Didn't I tell you I won't watch her anymore? Megan chuckled like my refusal was funny. It's too late. I already dropped my baby at your doorstep a while ago. I rushed to the door, alarmed. I found a baby crying on my doorstep, Megan. What were you thinking? I exclaimed. Well, you were being mean, so I had no choice, Megan replied, sounding gleeful as if she had just pulled off a prank. I told you, didn't I? I'd make you want to take care of my child. You wouldn't leave a baby on the doorstep, right? Stop joking. Where are you now? I demanded. Guess if I suppose it's hard for you to go out since you're pregnant, Megan laughed and abruptly hung up. When I tried calling her back, her phone was turned off. Despite my protests, when she finally returned in the evening, she ignored my words. This kept happening until I reluctantly started checking the doorstep and taking the baby whenever Megan called. Megan unapologetically said she was helping me practice for my upcoming childbirth, expecting me to be thankful. I'm not asking for thanks, but isn't there something to be said about attitude? I got more and more annoyed and stressed by her actions. This went on for six months until something happened a year ago. Going abroad for a bit. That's all Megan left before disappearing suddenly. No one knew where she went, but it wasn't surprising considering her habit of spontaneous trips funded by her part-time job earnings. My husband casually mentioned, it's nothing new. She probably went to see her husband since he was transferred overseas. We assumed she took her baby to meet its father. Our family, caught up in our own worries, hardly talked about Megan. 
Just before she disappeared, I went into labor two weeks early and was rushed to the hospital, caught off guard by the sudden birth of our beloved daughter. With all the commotion of an unexpected delivery and adjusting to being new parents, discussions about Megan faded. Before we knew it, a year had passed since she left. As my daughter's first birthday approached, our peaceful life was disrupted once again by Megan. I'm back, her familiar voice echoed through the unlocked front door. Megan, you're back from overseas, I asked, hardly believing it. Ignoring what I said, she went straight to my daughter. Thanks for looking after my daughter for a year, she said suddenly, then tried to take my child away. Hey, what are you doing with my child? I exclaimed, quickly taking her back. Megan looked confused. Come on, just because you've had her for a year doesn't mean you get to act like her mother. This child is really my daughter. Both of us were confused for a moment. Megan, didn't you take your own child with you overseas? What are you talking about? I left her in your yard, Megan said, cutting me off. It seemed like we were talking past each other, but I felt something awful might be happening. You mentioned leaving a child for a year when you went abroad. You left her in my yard, and that's what I've been saying. At that time, I had just given birth to this child and was in a hospital due to poor health. So I really don't know where your child is now. Shocked by the revelation, Megan's face went pale as she stuttered in disbelief. This is serious. We need to call the police, I said, reaching for my phone. But Megan grabbed my arm with trembling hands. Wait, please don't call the police. But how can we not? Please, I'll be in big trouble if you do, Megan said, looking really scared. I understood how serious the situation was, so I decided to tell our family about it. I called my husband and our in-laws to explain what was going on. But when I finished the call and turned around, Megan had disappeared. I was upset that she ran away when I wasn't looking. I felt really angry at Megan. After I called them, my husband and in-laws came to our house. My husband told us that there was indeed a baby in the yard while I was having our baby at the hospital. He didn't know much about Megan's baby and thought she took it away somewhere. He called the police to take care of the baby. We were so focused on our new baby that we completely forgot about that incident. Megan's child would have been around one or two years old when she finally returned. It's likely she confused my child with her own because they were close in age. After talking with the police, we found out Megan's baby was safe at an orphanage, which was a relief. I decided to let my husband and in-laws take care of Megan's child. But what worried me more was how scared Megan seemed. Her level of fear was unusual. There had to be more to this situation than met the eye. My gut feeling was right when I decided to take action. It looks like we need to teach her a lesson. I told my husband and in-laws. I had something on Megan that I never thought I'd use, but now was the time. It was time to show her. A week later, everything set up, I called Megan. After a few rings, she nervously picked up. Megan, your child is safe. You can come back home now, I assured her. Megan casually came over and rang the doorbell. I was so worried. I'm glad she's safe, Megan said with a careless laugh as she walked into our living room. But what she saw inside was unexpected. What in the world? Aaron and Ben. What are you guys doing here? Megan's husband, or should I say, her ex-husband, Aaron, was sitting on the sofa, looking angry at her. And on the floor sat her affair partner, Ben, with a sad expression like he was going to cry. This isn't good, Megan said, trying to leave our house. But my father-in-law, who's a big man, was blocking the doorway, stopping her from leaving. Megan ended up sitting on the floor next to Ben, getting a lecture from my husband, her ex-husband, and our in-laws. Come on, everything's fine now, right? The child is safe, Megan said stubbornly, puffing out her cheeks. But Aaron's cold stare silenced her. If you can't even look after the child properly, maybe you should give up custody and the child support payments, Aaron said, his tone icy. When I talked to Aaron, he told me that everything Megan had told us was a lie. He hadn't been sent overseas, and they had divorced because of her cheating. Despite that, Megan had managed to get custody of their child during the divorce and was getting a lot of money from Aaron for child support. Even if the parent with custody cheats, they still get child support. That's why Megan panicked when I wanted to call the police. She was scared of what would happen if they found out she wasn't actually taking care of their child. I explained to everyone. I felt really disappointed by Megan's selfishness. Kristen, you have to help me. I can't pay back the child support, Megan begged. 
But you're the one who left the baby with me. You can't deny that. Don't try to make excuses. Do you have any evidence? I asked calmly, while Megan screamed in panic. I shove her the video from my phone. After you kept leaving your baby at my doorstep, I installed a security camera for safety. It's important to keep the baby safe, I explained. Megan gasped, covering her mouth in shock. When did you record this? Ever since you began leaving your child at my doorstep. This video shows that you haven't been taking care of your responsibilities as a parent. Wouldn't it be better for the child to be with Aaron? I asked. Megan, biting her lip and growling softly, suddenly turned to Ben, who was sitting beside her, and burst into tears. Help me, Ben. Everyone's picking on me. But Ben, who appeared to have viewed Megan as just a casual relationship, gently pushed her away. I have another family, Megan. You've betrayed me, too. Who do you think paid for our trip around the world with the child support money? Megan gasped realizing her mistake. But is that really so wrong? She tried to argue. It's not exactly a good thing, I said firmly. Megan finally felt remorseful, sobbing and repeatedly apologizing, even falling to her knees on the floor. Please wait. I'm so sorry. Just forgive me, she begged. However, I couldn't let Megan off the hook easily. Remember, I won't forget how you've treated your child and me. You need to think hard about what you've done, I said firmly. Megan was taken away by the police, arrested, and her daughter was returned to Aaron, who got custody back. Now, Megan has to pay $500 in child support every month until the child is grown. Cut off by my husband and in-laws, Megan faces a tough road ahead. Even as she gets out of jail, Ben wasn't spared either. His wife filed for divorce and asked for compensation. As for me, I'm living a happy life with my husband and our daughter. Every day brings new joys and discoveries as we watch our daughter grow.